Hello and welcome. Today I want to show you uh, a little bit about how we can use Folsom introduction as a strategic rule. In other words, we can create new formulas or versions of old formulas that will allow us to uh, tweak the situation and then uh, meet our goal. So case in point here, we have this is exercise for uh, quiz lab and we're going to take a look at this. So we have our goal which is P or not P. So the easy approach is uh, we do a negation elimination here uh, that will give us the opposite of that as the assumption and we're supposed to get down here. Now obviously by the way this goal is correct right P is either true or P is not true. Uh, that's it. So now we have to somehow uh, go from uh, this negated disjunction uh, on line one all the way down to our conclusion. Because we're not able to use any derived rules to get past it, uh, we have to figure out what to do. The fact of the matter is nothing that we currently have is going to work here on line one, and that's because we don't have a negated disjunction uh, option. So we can't just do this as a disjunction. So instead what we do is we hit the Folsom introduction right here. We select uh, our goal, which is the Folsom down here. And then we select the goal that we need to get in order to have a contradiction. So we need a P or not P to somehow be derived out of this mess. And so now when we click on, uh, so we've clicked on what we want to negate. We've clicked on the fact that we want it to be a contradiction. And when we hit apply, it will create as a new goal this bit right here, P or not P. So now we have to work backwards. And uh, in this case here, we'll just do a, uh, we'll pull a not P uh, out of the equation. Okay. So if we could get to not P, then we could create P or not P. Fair enough. Uh, so now how do we get to this not P? Pretty simple. We're going to do a negation introduction on that not P. When we hit apply, it's going to create the assumption of P, and then we have to end in a contradiction. And that works for us, because when I have this P, it's the same as the uh, left-hand disjunct of line 1. So I can create P or not P off of that. P. And there's my contradiction, lines 1 and 3. So now I do follow some introduction on these two lines. And that's going to be uh, it. Sorry for all the music. Uh, that's how we solve this problem. All right, so now we're going to take a look at this uh, other problem. This is from chapter 5, but that's okay because we uh, it's the same basic functions. They're not letting us use derived functions yet anyway. So we have to prove that not P and Q equals not P or not Q. Pretty sort of straightforward. So uh, the, the way that we do this is we do uh, negation elimination, so that gives us the opposite of this, so now this is what we're going to aim to negate. But again, we don't have negation, negated disjunction elimination as a feature without derived rules, so we need to get uh, not P and or not Q together so that we can form this disjunction, and then that will give us our uh, contradiction. I can't just pull not P and not Q out of anything, so I'm probably going to need to find a way to pull P or Q out of things and then do negation elimination, and that will sort of give me what I want. And a uh, pretty good candidate for that is my line one. So I'm going to do Folsom introduction on my line one, and I'm going to tell it that I, I need it to somehow lead to a Folsom. In other words, I need P and Q to be true. Uh, and that will give me a uh, a contradiction, right? So here we go. Uh, now I have this P and Q, but they're set as goals. I need a way of working sort of forwards, not backwards, and I still don't have a negated disjunction feature. So I'm going to do 
uh, conjunction and reduction in reverse, it will give me P and Q as my previous goals, and that's how I supposedly get P and Q. So we do that. I have P and I have Q. But I can turn that into not P and into not Q by doing elimination of uh, yeah, uh, elimin negation elimination. Jeez. So it gives me the negated version of my goal, and then I have to prove that that leads to a contradiction. And in this case, it's actually pretty easy. If I have not P, I can create not P and not Q without the negation in the front, and that's all I need. So in this case, I need to add the not Q. Uh, not Q, there we go. And that gives me a false sum. It gives me a contradiction between lines 2 and 4. Uh, I'll just do a left disjunction introduction on the Q, and I will select not P as a target. And so now I have that, and again I have a false sum introduction with lines 2 and 8. And that's it, that's the entire problem, right? But it becomes impossible to do this kind of thing unless in one of the steps I can do this false sum introduction. So at that point I pick something that I want to use as a way of creating the contradiction, and it will let me just create that. Now, I don't get to hold on to it. I have to justify how I got there, but it gives me something to work back from. Uh, and that's really useful because uh, sometimes trying to work directly towards a false sum just does not work out. So that's the, uh, that's the suggestion there. All right, if you have any questions or comments, leave it in the comments or shoot me an email, and I'll see everybody next time. Take care.